To mark 2020 International Youth Day, Mind to Mind Initiative, in collaboration with PLUS TV Africa, held a virtual conference. The event hosted the former president of Nigeria, Olusegun Obasanjo, and the director United Nations Information Center Nigeria, represented by Mrs. Bolanle Olumeko, for an extended conversation on the theme for this year's International Youth Day, Youth Engagement for Global Action. Message from the United Nations called on leaders and adults everywhere to do everything possible to enable young people enjoy lives of safety, dignity and opportunity to contribute to the fullest of their potential. While Mr. Obasanjo emphasized the importance of basic education for all. Founder of Mind to Mind Initiative, Chinasa Amechi, started the conversation by highlighting the need to get young people involved in the process of achieving the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, while the Managing Director and Editor-in-Chief, Plus TV Africa, Mr. Kayode Akintemi, gave the closing remarks. Do enjoy this brief version of the conversation. Based on UN definition of youth as people between the ages of 15 to 24 years, without prejudice to other definitions by members' nations, the global youth population is about 16%. Bringing it home, a youth in Nigeria is defined as anyone between the ages of 18 to 35 years. This represents 19% of the country's population. Without my own words, all the 17 Sustainable development goals have a direct impact on the all-round development of youth across the globe. Hence, it will never be wrong to get the youth involved in the process of attaining these goals. On this point, I welcome you all to this unique, significant event. We need to go through the profile of our Baba today. Uh, for many people that do not know him, uh, please pay attention to hear his profile. Uh, Chief Olusha Gwabasando was born of Ibo Ogun, Ola Ogun, in Ogun State to a farming family of the Ogun branch. Chief Obasanjo was educated largely in Abe Okuta, joining the Nigerian Army where he specialized in engineering. He spent time assigned in the Congo, Britain, India, rising to the, major, to the rank of a major. In the later part of the 1960s, he played a major role in combating Biafra separatists during the Nigerian Civil War, accepting this, their surrender in 1970. In 1975, a military coup established a junta with Baba Obasanjo as part of its ruling class. After the leader, Moritala Muhammad, was assassinated the following year, the Supreme Military Council appointed Baba Obasanjo as head of state. Continuing Muritala's policies, Baba Obasanjo oversaw budgetary cutbacks and expansion of access to free school education. Increasingly aligning Nigeria with the United States, he emphasized support for groups opposing white minority rule in South Africa, who was committed to democracy and returning Nigeria to the path of democracy. Baba Obasanjo, in this breath, oversaw the 1979 election, which was successful. And that was what handed over power to a civilian president, Alaji Shehu Shagari, who is now late. Baba Obasanjo retired from the army into his other farm, where he became a farmer, as well as a publisher of books. He took part in international initiatives and in various, he actually interfered and you know, positively settled many African conflicts. In 1993, when the late General Sonia Abacha seized power in the military coup, Baba Obasanjo was openly critical of the Abacha administration. In response, in 1995, Baba Obasanjo was arrested and convicted as being part of a planned coup. Despite protesting his innocence, he was put in detention. While imprisoned, he found a new experience in God. He used the opportunity to rediscover God and rededicated his life to Christ. He was released following Abacha's death 
1998. In 1998, he entered into politics and he became the president of Nigeria in 1999. He was also re-elected in, in 2003 as president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He influenced Pan-Africanist ideas. He was a keen supporter of the formation of the African Union and served as its chair from 2004 to 2006. In retirement, he earned a PhD in theology and has continued to be a strong voice in the socio-economic and political development of Nigeria and Africa at large. This is a short profile and a brief profile on our main guest today, Baba Umushegu Obasanjo. Thank you very much for your attention. Standing on all existing protocols, I read the Secretary General's message. The theme of this year's International Youth Day, Youth Engagement for Global Action, spotlights the ways in which the voices and activism of young people are making a difference and moving our world closer to the values and visions of the United Nations Charter. This year's Youth Day occurs as the lives and aspirations of young people continue to be upended by the COVID-19 pandemic. Some have lost their lives and many have seen family members and other loved ones perish. The vulnerabilities of young refugees, displaced persons, young women and girls, and others caught up in conflict or disaster have grown more acute. A generation's very formation has been jeopardized. Their steps towards adulthood, identity, and self-sufficiency thrown off course. Some have taken on care burdens or are suffering from increased risk of hunger, violence in the home, or the prospect of never being able to resume their education. But this generation is also resilient, resourceful, and engaged. They are the young people who have risen up to demand climate action. They are mobilizing for racial justice and gender equality, and are the champions of a more sustainable world. They are peace builders promoting social cohesion at a time of social distancing, advancing an end to violence globally, and advocating harmony at a time of rising hatred. Many are young women who have been on the front lines in mobilizing for justice and climate action, while also serving on the front lines of the COVID-19 response. Realizing the promise of this generation means investing far more in young people's inclusion, participation, organizations, and initiatives. I call on leaders and adults everywhere to do everything possible to enable the world's youth to enjoy lives of safety, dignity, and opportunity, and contribute to the fullest of their greatest potential. Message of the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, on International Youth Day. The our theme for this year's International Youth Day says youth engagement for global action. So we want to have Baba, you know, give his um, opening remarks. Shinasa, thank you very, very much. Um, and let me thank all of you who are participating on this platform this afternoon. And um, let me um, belatedly wish you happy International Youth Day. Thank you, sir. Which came on the, which came on the uh, 12th of August. Um, but um, as you rightly pointed out, because of the situation we are in, um, we are having this program uh, only today. Uh, let me thank Cheye, who took so much time to say what needed not to be said about me. Um, <laughs> Uh, thank you for saying it all the same. And um, I do hope that some people are not listening when you are saying it, especially those who put themselves in the position of adversary. The theme for the uh, International Youth uh, uh, Day this year 
is youth engagement for global action. I understand this is the um, uh, theme, but uh, I do not mind if I start from uh, known, if you like to put it that way, to the unknown. Or if I start from the near to the far. Now, what, what I mean by that is that if we are talking of engagement of youth, engagement of youth should start from whom? Mm. From before we talk of, well, getting into the global uh, uh, arena. Uh, engagement of youth should start from home. If you don't mind, what I will want to talk about would be local engagement, national engagement, even regional engagement, and then global engagement. Now, the point is that these, there are areas where these cannot be really separated. They flow into them, into, uh, into, into other. Um, let's take the issue, lo uh, local. Education, it's local, it's national, it's regional, it's global. Uh, so global that UNESCO had uh, started to talk of education for all. And they even gave a time when there should be education for all. But let us come to our own local situation and then national. In Nigeria, there are parts of local areas where education is not accorded the attention, is not accorded the uh, importance uh, that it should be accorded. And if you have no education, how can a youth develop and be able to make meaningful contribution to its own life, to its own family life, to its own community, to its own locality, and to its own nation? And then, of course, you talk of the global. Next thing I would talk about is uh, health. Uh, health uh, is wealth. In fact, now is there what anything that you can do at the local level? Of course, there is a lot that they can do at the local level. Um, <clears throat> but we go back to the first thing I mentioned. If they do not have education, um, I'm not talking about uh, uh, higher education now, but because when you talk about education, there's a lot to talk about. I am talking mainly about education. The first 10 years of a child's life in education. When I go out to rural areas, and um, I am proud to say that my background is rural. If you have taken me out of the rural community or rural life, you haven't taken um, a rural life out of me because I'm still very much a rural boy, a village boy, and a farmer. And um, I go to this rural area, and you hear, you see a person suffering from diabetes, which means he should refrain from sugar. And you see him, what is he drinking? He drinking tea uh, with two, three kilos of sugar in it. I have been diagnosed diabetic for more than 35 years. I manage my diabetes. I have seen people who within two, three years of being diagnosed diabetic, they've packed up and they've died because they do not even understand how to manage their health. Now, youth can do this, particularly in the area of non-communicable disease. Um, uh, diabetes, uh, sickle cell, um, uh, uh, high blood pressure, uh, 
and, 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 and so on. Now, they should be able to give, uh, give away, uh, raise awareness within their community, within their locality, within the nation. Only yesterday I was talking about uh, polio. An organization, Rotary International, decided they want to get rid of polio in the world, and they did. They did. Now, uh, President Jimmy Carter decided he would want to make contribution to getting rid of any war. And he had hugely succeeded. We can decide in our own locality what we want to do. Other issue, issue of management of diversity. Issue of management of diversity, which is the main cause of conflict, of poor governance within our communities and even within our nation. I believe that you can make meaningful contributions we have several questions that we've put down to ask you today. Thank you, sir. The first one is following the passage of not the Too Young to Run Act, Nigeria witnessed a surge in young candidates, but this candidate couldn't secure party nomination. What can young people do to navigate a highly commercialized and toxic candid candidate nomination process and party system, sir? You want me to give you a very difficult task? Form your own party, okay. manage it, run it, and take over. The second question is this. No doubt, Nigeria, Nigeria has been grappling with leadership crisis for over 60 years. In your opinion, what kind of leadership can or should young people provide to liberate Nigeria from the state's capture and Malgovernance. Well, when you look at um, uh, when when you look into uh, books and uh, experts have written on leadership and all that, um, you get a lot being said, and they will tell you what are the principles of leadership, uh, leadership uh, transformational leadership, transitional leadership, all sorts of forms of leadership. Um, and I've come to the conclusion that my authority for leadership is the Bible. I have no, I have no apology for saying this because when I go into the Bible, I see everything you need in leadership in the Bible. The good, the bad, the, in, uh, the not so bad. And when you, one major story in the uh, Bible, but in the Old, Old Testament, is the history or the story of the children of Israel. They started with God being their leader. Then they said, no, 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 we don't want God to be our leader. Um, we want uh, when God was their leader, God chose um, prophets for them to lead them. And then they said they want kings. God said, look, you will, this will not be, will not serve your purpose. They insisted. God gave them king. And they regretted it. And they kept regretting it until Jesus Christ came. They had all sorts of leaders. They had Samuel, they had Saul, they had even Samson, stupid young woman, young man. Uh, you, you have, there you have David, um, you have Solomon, um, all of them like that. But at the end of the day, Jesus Christ came and he was the ultimate leader that we have ever had. The human aspect of him cannot be regarded as perfect, but the God aspect of him was totally perfect. And for me, my 
I take my example of leadership from the Bible. You will see good leaders there. You will see the good. You will see leaders that have made mistakes, like David. David broke uh, ten commandments that God gave. David uh, disobeyed eight of them. Eight out of ten were, were disobeyed. So it's woeful failure. <laughs> but in spite of that. God said of David, a man after my heart. A man after my heart. What was there in David's leadership that God called him a man after my heart? He has committed murder, committed adultery, committed covetousness. Now name it. Eight out of ten commandments and yet. So there is a lot that I see in the Bible. That the the thing, first thing is that uh, David never committed the same sin twice. One, and he never had any other God beside the only living God. And I believe that whatever qualities of leadership you have, whatever features of leadership you have. One uh, point in leadership that you must have, I have it here, uh, is that you must have fear of God. It must be part of you as a leader. Most of what is happening in our own society is because people don't have the fear of God. Thank you very much, sir. I will have Mr. Share, my colleague, to to come up with his own questions. Sir, from experience, what is it that disqualifies the Nigerian youth of today? Is it a lack of courage? Or is it a lack of, lack of cash? Or a lack of uh, access to... The Nigerian, the Nigerian youth of today are disqualified by themselves. Okay, how, sir? So that we want to learn from that, sir. Look, there is nobody who will bring anything to you on a platter of gold. Mm. Cheye, come on, you get out there and take it. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, you, uh, you, what you want is somebody to come and say, Cheye, hey, come on, have it here. Nobody will do that for you. Well, I have said that, look, when I sit down here and two people sit on my right, two people sit on my left, and they continue to press me, you don't even need violence. You continue to press me. When I become uncomfortable, I will get out. Now, it's not just money. You have the power, the power of number. What make do you make, uh, what do you, uh, you, do you make of it? Even trying to get you together, trying to get you together, you are so ambitious that you don't even think nationally. You are either thinking personally, ethnically, or thinking de devilishly. Prepare yourself and get your act together. But if you think anybody will give you power on the platter of gold, you are deceiving yourself. You have to make, you have to put in pressure. You have to make it uncomfortable so that they will uh, know that they have to go home. Youth and elders have to work together. A, a proverb in Yoruba that be omadebani ashore. If you have dresses more than an old man as a youth, you have all sorts of and fancy dresses more than an old man, you won't have rags as much as, a, as much as an old man. That is experience. You need the experience of the old man. You need what they have done. Why did you do this? Like you are saying now, why did you do this? How did this, uh, this happen? Before we uh, come to the end of this um, program, we have um, Mr. K. Akintemi in the house. Mr. K, please, can we have you? Uh, Chinasa, thank you very much. This has been a very rewarding uh, exercise. Congratulations on this achievement. I must thank commend you. the work that has gone into it and commend all of those who have supported you uh, in making this happen. And also, we must say a big thank you to um, 
to uh, our own Baba, Baba Obasanjo, who has contributed to this conversation. I listened to a lot of the things that uh, Chief Olusha Gwambasanjo has said, and they're very, very clear that there is no other way for Nigerian youths to be able to take power other than to take it, because that's the only way. I remember being in London many years ago, and we had another living legend from Nigeria, uh, Dr. Christopher Kolade, speaking to us almost uh, about almost 20 years ago and talking to us young people then and telling us that if you guys don't come back to Nigeria, you can't influence anything in Nigeria. If you now come to Nigeria, if you don't get involved and get your hands dirty, you really cannot achieve anything. So you have to come into Nigeria and you have to go into political parties and then organize and create things that you want to happen. Nobody, like Baba Basan just said, will hand over power to the next generation until they go to the grave. And that's why we have septuagenarians, octogenarians. They will go on until they're 90. And it's not only Nigeria, it cuts across the entire African continent. So you will find that all the old people, they will wait until the day they die so that they will get state burial as being a 92 year old president of Nigeria dying and then being buried and being replaced by an 87 year old vice president who will then also wait until he dies before anybody else can take over. If we're going to create the change, like Chief Olusha Gwambasan just said, every single young Nigerian will have to focus on the fact that we do want to take, make a change and we're going to get our hands dirty. It goes with the election. It goes with the registration for election. It goes with uh, your voter's card. It goes with engaging other young people. It goes with the fact that you cannot anymore find politics boring. So I will say this is the start of a great new thing. Chinoza Amichi and all the people that put this together, well done. Plus TV Africa, Channel 408, we are committed to support visions of this nature. And for everybody that's participated, thank you very much. And please do engage in any which way possible. Do engage. Thank you so much for this closing remarks. And I also want to use, want to use this opportunity to thank everyone that has logged on today. And I hope it doesn't end here. And like Baba said, you know, we don't need to be spoon feed genius that we need to do the right thing we need to engage we need to take that drastic decision we need to go out there and take what belongs to us we need to rewrite the narrative so it's left to us it's up to us to go out there and do the needful thank you very much and see you some other time